Hello, my name is Emiliano. Uh, I'm a musician from Lyon. Lyon is in France, so uh, pardon me if my English is not perfect. I'll do my best. But uh, yeah. So this workshop is about this little guy right here. I don't know if you can see him. His name is Playtron. Most of you, I assume that you know what Playtron is since you're here right now. But in case you don't know, let me just explain quickly what it is and what Playtronica is. Uh, Playtronica builds these, uh, let's call them musical gadgets. They're controllers that allow you to control music software using um, conductivity. So connecting objects that can conduct electricity and by touching them you're going to make music. That's the basic principle. Um, before we go any further, I just wanted to address um, why we're doing this workshop and why I think personally on, on my daily work that uh, Playtron is useful, Playtron is interesting and uh, quite original. And what it allows you to do is, uh, I think, um, yeah, pretty interesting. So, I personally have a, an interest in musical technology that allows you to obviously make music, but in a way that is the most intuitive as possible. So basically, you don't have too much of a learning proce process. You directly go into playing music, having fun, and I really believe that technology today, such as Playtron and many others, allow this, allow you to not have to go through music theory, through learning an instrument and having this really steep learning curve over the years. And uh, it, 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 yeah, it gives us this quick access to making music, you know. And the power of it is that you're controlling musical softwares in Today, musical software are like really powerful. You can do so many things with it. And so it won't be like, you know, have, taking the time to learn the guitar and until you get to play the, the stuff you like. Here you can use samples, you can use synth, you can use drums, you can use loops. And you immediately get into making music. There's no fussing around, you know. So that's one thing I really enjoy with it, and that's why I'm using it in my work as an educator. Uh, I've been doing this for two years, so it hasn't been that long, but I'm working yeah, mainly in France with the French department of Playtronica. We do a bunch of uh, workshops all over the year, and um, yeah, we, we, we come from different backgrounds, but uh, the, the idea is that um, we try to address as many different people as we can and by that I mean age because we've worked with uh, toddlers and we've worked with adults and all that's in between so yeah before I give you any examples I have a lot of stuff I want to show you today but um, I just maybe quickly explain because I saw in the comments that some of you are beginners or just bought the device or don't know maybe don't know really how this works so as I said, the, the idea is that you connect stuff to this. The first thing you're going to need, obviously, and it comes with it when you buy it, is the, the USB cable. That allows you to connect it to your music device, because this is a s controller. It doesn't produce sound. It controls the software or the machine that will produce sound eventually. So you need to choose from there what you're going to control. That could be a phone. That could be a computer, that could be an iPad or, or whatever device that uh, uses MIDI. MIDI is really important to understand this. MIDI is the language that allows um, music machines and softwares to communicate to each other and give information. So Playtron is going to give the information to the software, play this note when I press this. That's the basic principle. So this is USB. And uh, as you can see, I'm using an adapter. Uh, it, it comes separately, so you might have to get it online. Uh, it allows you to go to micro USB or to USB type C. I need USB type C for my computer, so I'm using this. 
another type of adapter you might need, uh, depending on your device. I'm using this because my iPad needs Thunderbolt. No, not Thunderbolt. Uh, what's the name again? Whatever. Yeah, we need this. So, okay, you have Playtron. You have your cable. It's connected to your device. You've chosen the, um, the, the software. We'll talk about that in a moment. And then you need to connect your objects, obviously, because you're not going to play. I mean, you could play Playtron just by touching the, the metal plates right here. You have 16 inputs, so 16 objects you can connect, plus two that will uh, act as ground, because uh, with the electrical circuit, you need a positive and a negative. So the objects will be the positive, the ground will be the negative, and once you're touching both, you're going to close the circuit with your body acting as the conductor. We have this and then, so yeah, you're going to connect your object and this is what you're getting when you buy a Playtron. Crocodile clips. This is the basic crocodile clips. They're not that long, but you can connect uh, several crocodile clips together and make longer cables. You could use other types of cables, that's up to you. But uh, the basic uh, thing is, this is connected via USB. You take your cro crocodile clip, plug it in one of the inputs, and then this goes to the object of your choosing. Okay? Again, just touching the object won't work. You have to touch also something that is connected to the ground pin. The ground pin is this one. Okay? If I just touch it, it won't work. Uh, maybe a quick demonstration right now. Let me just plug all this in. And we're going to go through some of the... some softwares uh, I will suggest you using if it's the first time or if you want to go further. It depends on your level. So, boom. Okay, this is connected. The lights are on. So let's say, let's say there's an object connected to this. It won't work, but if I touch the ground, the sound. So the sound is coming from, um, let me do this, boom. The sound is coming from this online synth, which is called Dot Piano. Dot Piano is in the collection of online synths that we put up on this website. So you go to synth dot playtronica dot com okay dot piano is this one okay uh, dot piano is pretty nice because uh, first off it's online so you don't need a musical software of your own like Ableton or whatever you can just go on Google Chrome and, and go on this website. Dot Piano has a bunch of different sounds. And uh, it's really nice because it has color attached to it. So visually it's really appealing. And that could be something you, you would be using for your, for your workshops. Color, but more on that later. <laughs> uh, Another one you might use, this is um, Chrome Music Lab. It was made by, um, by Google, the Chrome Music Lab. It's a bunch of apps for kids. Super nice, super well done. And this one, Shared Piano, that allows you to play uh, with people connected to the same link. It does work with Playtron, so... Okay. Uh, on this collection here, on Light Synth, you've got uh, a lot of um, online synth that are more or less complex. It depends who you're working with uh, and what you want to achieve, because obviously with those you're going to be able to make more complex and interesting sounds than dot piano, but you're going to have maybe to learn about, about synthesis, like Dext. Dext is super cool, but it's a bit... Uh, it's a bit complex. Yeah. Then you have 
the Platronica Sampler. Platronica Sampler is my favorite. It's a collection of, um, of uh, sample packs made by the Platronica team. So you have really all these banks and inside the banks you have a bunch of kits. So if I load this one, wait, I'm gonna deactivate dot piano. There's share piano also. Boom. This one also has this visual appeal to it that is really cool, and it's made up as a it's made up as a as a kit, so the sounds work together. Um, maybe one last app and then we're gonna go inside um, more details one app we really like is called Koala Koala is in is for iOS it looks like this and uh, it's a sampler that allows you to record with your voice with the microphone or load samples inside it control them with Playtron <coughs> like Playtron is mapped to it because this is a, an app that uses MIDI so you can use it with it and you have tons of editing possible. You can create sequences. You can perform with effects on, on a live. So this is like, I mean, I really enjoy this tool for, uh, for my workshops. And um, yeah, so once you've chosen the app or, uh, or uh, software you're gonna use, I use a lot Ableton Live but not necessarily, it depends who I'm working with and what I want to achieve. The idea is that um, you have to think, before even thinking about building your instrument, building your, uh, your device, because you're building a device, or the kids are, but you might have to think, what sounds do I want to make? Or how? So am I coming with sample packs and they're going to play with it? Am I going to uh, have them create their own sounds? And so how? With Koala you can. You can create them via synthesis. If they want to play samples but they want to choose them, uh, again, you might have to have like sample banks available for them to download. All that type of stuff. And uh, yeah, depending on, uh, on the age of the people you have in front of you, Sound design can be pretty important, but that's a big factor because event like uh, the bottom line of all this is making music, right? As I said, what is the for me the question is what is the fastest way for making music going straight to the point, and what, so then the question comes: what music? What do we want to do? Okay. Um, so that's that. So you have the software, you have the connectivity. I think, I hope everything's clear for you. If you have more questions, you have um, uh, uh, tutorials, video or written tutorials online uh, that explain pretty much everything you need to know, at least the basis. But what, now we're going to talk about what we could be doing. Uh, choosing what materials we're going to use and then uh, how to use them. First thing I wanted to talk about is this. This is called uh, copper tape. Copper tape uh, is really convenient because uh, sometimes you're going to have objects that you really like, but you won't be able to to connect them because they're not conductive and that happens or you're going to want to make bridges between objects or make a surface uh, conductive and this is really nice like it, it's tape basi basically but it's metal so you can use this and either put it on objects put it on a table that's a thing we do a lot is putting it on the table for uh, for uh, making the ground you know the ground I talked about this is the ground Instead of having an object that everyone has to touch, you put a strip of, rub of uh, copper tape on the table 
connect the ground to it and then they can all put their hand on the table. That's the first tip. So copper tape is really nice. I re uh, strongly suggest you have some with you when you're doing your uh, workshops. It's always useful. It comes in different sizes. This is the one you can find on uh, Playtronica's shop online. But um, you can find others in other shops and that are larger, etc. Um, yeah, copper tape is pretty nice. Then you have a bunch of stuff you could be using. One of them is uh, super nice. It's called <coughs> conductive ink. So let me show you. Um, wait a second. So yeah, conductive ink is basically uh, ink or paint that uh, will uh, conduct electricity. And you can make it yourself. It, uh, I have a part here, yeah. It gives you this, this black, uh, black paint that is really nice. And you can use that uh, same thing for uh, uh, connecting points, or you can use it uh, for making art, you know, for drawing. That's the cool part. So you're going to use uh, graphite powder, pure graphite powder, and mix it with uh, a medium that could be either glue or uh, varnish. I use varnish. And then a bit of water. You mix that up and it gives you this paint. Um, the ratios have to be pretty precise. Like you have to put a lot of graphite to make sure it works. You have a bunch of tutorials for this online, so go check them out. You just type uh, conductive ink tutorial and they teach you how to how to make your own. Uh, another material that is nice, I'm, uh, I'm not going to get it there, but it's uh, aluminum foil because you can shape it or you can put it on objects. So that too should definitely be in your kit, your starting pack when you're doing your, play, uh, your workshops. You have your conductive ink. You have your copper tape, you have your aluminium, and then you have the objects that you chose. Those could be of any category, as long as they're conductive. So, containing water, that's the most obvious. So it could be also just pure water, uh, or containing metal. Um, yeah, that's your kit. And yeah, I think we can talk now about uh, some examples. So the first one, let me show you if I have, if I have it somewhere. Um, I don't know if I have a drawing, but the, um, yeah, so using conductive paint. So this format is about um, drawing shapes, drawing, and then playing music with them. That's the basic principle. And you, basically you're trying to bring, pe um, bring the participants into thinking of a bridge between um, graphic representation, visual and sound. That's one I did with, uh, how old were they? I mean, something like between six and nine, but it couldn't work with any ages. Uh, we, do, we do it all the time. So you ask them to draw something. It could be uh, asking to draw a sound, so you make them hear a sound and you say, well, how do you think it looks? Or the other way around, make a drawing and then ask them, well, how do you think your drawing sounds? Or just any, any topic you want, for example, uh, draw, the, draw the, instrument, the musical instrument of, your, of the future. Like do a drawing of that, imagine how it looks, how you would play it, and then how it would sound. Then you connect all the drawings, and uh, and you and you can make music. Um, I think I have maybe a uh, a picture I can show you right here. So this is an exhibition, more or less, that we did with uh, with uh, drawings of kids. This is like big format. They were all connected, so they chose the sounds. They chose how they would look. And then we did this exhibition. 
that was that's uh, one of the formats that works really well and you can like just choose how how you're going to get them drawing what what is the first um idea what what's the spark you know but bridging between uh, visuals and sound is something really interesting to do uh, because it really sparkles imagination and creativity another example is um yeah this is just pretty basic but uh you so you go from um so you ask them uh to tell a sound okay so for example the kick of a drum the kick how would you tell it how would you spell it okay and and then from there you can write it down so for example they said boom so boom and boom becomes the the sound trigger okay you connect those two with your copper tape and go boom 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 so you have the visual the sound and the the letters like the the, the actual word so that's a really clear way of knowing that the sound boom is here because it's written instead of having an object and having to remember that oh the apple does the snare so you had clap you had a uh, like the sound tss is uh, the hi-hat etc it could be a ah, o oh, could be i don't know you you do whatever you want so yeah that's a that's a small one that's pretty fun uh while we're on small cards, this is a system um, inspired by so learning music but with visuals again. And those are cards, there are I think eight of them. And all the eight have different drawings on them that are more or less abstract. Which is nice because then you can really imagine the sound that goes with it. Because this one really looks like a moon, so you already have an idea. But most of them uh, are sufficiently abstract that, so that you really need to use your imagination. And this, I use this for um, creating some kind of a sheet music. So you put the cards, wait, I have a picture here. You, put, you display the cards in front of the kids. And then you use those cards to create, or and they can do it, create... Um, a sheet okay this is how it looked right here and you can see that on the board there are the cards so yeah it creates a sequence it creates a sequence it creates if you want a loop you can work on rhythm that's one of the nice things you work on rhythm and uh, for this one, I suggest you choose the sounds first. But you could do, you could let them choose. Uh, again, it depends on who you're working with. Because, uh, for example, for toddlers, I realize I'm not a specialist, but I realize that uh, for them, the most important thing is about bringing them into an an imaginary world, something that is appealing, something that, that is a bit magic, where sounds have an importance, but you don't want to go too much in depth or, oh, look, this is conductive, this is plugged to the computer. You don't need all of that with them. You just have to bring them into a world of sounds. And uh, one way I find really useful is telling a story, like just coming up with a story and telling well, um, so you're, let's say you're using a plant as your conductive object and you're saying this plant is a magical plant. It was found there and uh, music was coming out of, there, of, out of it. And so, yeah, touch, the, touch it and see if you can do it yourself. And you go and bringing them uh, slowly into this musical world where they just, uh, they're in this, yeah, imagination sphere and... They're not so much into actually focusing on on technicality or whatever. 
Because even doing that, they are working on uh, their musical sense. They are working on their hearing. They are working on uh, on uh, playing with others. That's a really important aspect. That is in all my workshops. I I really focus on this, on um, trying to work on that sense of togetherness, working with uh, playing with others, being a part of a group. So being yourself, an individual, but being part of a group and playing and um, and also hearing I think is uh, something that doesn't only apply to music like if you actually not hearing but listening yeah that's what I wanted to say listening is fundamental I think when just in society in general and for the your relationships being able to not just hear what someone is saying but listening actually and not just to others, but to yourself, having this sense and knowing to listen to your environment and what g feedback it gives you of your surrounding. And with music, you can work on that. Music has this uh, power of not, yeah, like, like, you're not just playing music, you're working on yourself. You're working on your capacity of being a social being. Um, and also, uh, so yeah, you have uh, social behavior, you have uh, listening, and you have the uh, being able to focus, right? Because in schools, we know that kids more or less uh, are able to focus depending on the way they are being teached. And being in class on a, on a table for hours is not necessarily the best method, but whatever. Uh, and with music, since you're doing something that makes sense to you because you're playing music with others, you are being a part of building something greater, something of a group. And so you focus, but naturally, and you work on that. And there are many studies that show that people who play music tend to be more focused when they are doing something and by people I mean also kids like schools where the, there is music those kids in other um, domain like mathematics English whatever they are learning after the fact that they worked on those things in music listening focusing being with the group being yourself all that stuff is useful later in other in other fields so yeah, that's something I really wanted to say. Let's keep on going. I have another example uh, of uh, application you could be doing. And that's with, uh, you'd probably want to do that with kids that already play music or that have uh, a, a, a bit of knowledge in music, so knowing the instruments. Or not, it depends, but I would do it like that. You do it your own way. And it's about... Um, uh, building um, augmented instruments. Augmented instruments, this is one. I know it looks like a simple kalimba, but you can see those. Those are stripes of copper tape. So if I connect it to Playtron here, I put my crocodile clips, clips here, and then I can play the sound of the kalimba the actual sound and another sound that I that I have chosen on my software so it makes a double sound and that's what we call augmented instrument we did this with uh, yeah kids that have instruments or that play them uh, or uh, like you're in a school and you go in the uh, music classroom and there's a bunch of instruments this is a nice way of uh, making them think of what a musical instrument is because basically, if you just have something that uh, with your action produces sound, that's an instrument. Tapping on a table, that's a, more or less an instrument. And there's many ways of thinking about, about this. So it's really nice that like you have a drum, you have a saxophone, but the saxophone does drum sounds and the drum does saxophone sounds, like switching it up, doing whatever you want. This is one of the really... <coughs> strong points of uh, of this is uh, 
transforming stuff. So not just making um, regular objects, inanimate objects, making them sound. That's the uh, the the fundamental uh, thing of Electronica is making things sound. That's what we say. We say things should sound. But you can also say, uh, what if I want this things that this thing that already sounds sound different? You know, you could do that. And this works pretty well. You, uh, the kids have to be a, a bit older, uh, like toddlers. It would be a bit difficult. For toddlers, you wanna so yeah, you have this idea of uh, imaginary world, uh, telling a story, and this and that, and you could be using um, materials that uh, that's appealing to them. One of them is Play-Doh. Play-Doh is like so fun. Just buy a bunch of Play-Doh, different colors and give them and they're gonna have fun with it because that's already a thing that they like they like play-doh they like building you know playing with it so you s you tell them well uh, create a shape do something blah 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 then we connect it and then their object that they made produces sound and that's that's like super cool effect again um, your uh, how do you say this objective uh, your goals the goals you give yourself for the workshops can be really different and um, like with toddlers my goal is always to go for fun you know fun have fun create a, an experience have a good time uh, rather than trying to teach them you know but if I have more time, like let's say I have uh, one hour and then another hour with the same group and hoping they're not too much because that creates a lot of uh, uh, having n numerous uh, people can be difficult. Like you won't be able to, to reach the same amount of work with, uh, with a lot of people. So you need to adapt. But uh, according to the time and the people you have, you won't do the same things, and uh, and it's okay, you know. You don't. You're not trying to make them professional musicians. That's not the point. Or even musicians. You're trying to make them play music, to have fun playing music, having fun with sound, having fun with uh, people that are with them in that moment, which is what music is all about, right? And at least that's what I believe. Uh, uh, let's yeah. Let's talk about. Uh, I have another example of project you could be doing. The project is called uh, Future Things. I didn't come up with it, but I've been doing it for these two years. And uh, Future Things is about uh, making the participants think about the future. Uh, and uh, making work on design so not just sounds but also design like the the actual shapes so future things the way I did it was okay how will the instruments of the future look like sound like what uh, what uh, material etc how will we play them uh, so from there we start building it not just drawing it as we did earlier with uh, with conductive ink. You can do that first and then actually making the objects. And um, and for this, I try to make them do this kind of, uh, of technical... This is one a kid did. What was his name? Val... Valentina. Valentina. Valentina did this. This was her instrument. Two sticks with aluminium balls and um, me um, yeah, metal wire and then here it was connected to Playtron and so she would play it as a drum that was her instrument of course it wasn't doing drum sounds which was really cool she was like I, I'm gonna play it like a drum but it won't make a drum sound and yeah so they have to really think in a almost scientific way draw it, make a scheme 
explain, you know, putting those words, and then at the bottom writing a bit about it, giving it a name. That's a really nice thing, a name for it, and uh, and yeah, that's it. So this requires obviously a lot, uh, some time. You cannot do this in two hours. You need some time. Um, but that's, uh, yeah, maybe I have a picture I can show you. That's a really nice, uh, a nice project. Uh, look. Yeah. They built, they built a bunch of objects that were all connected to, to Playtron. They all chose their sounds. And then we did this kind of uh, exhibition. The parents came. The kids played it because uh, this project was nice because not only we were uh, building them, but then the interesting part obviously is playing. And playing, you have a bunch of uh, things you have to work on. So we talked about listening, about being with others, but there's also rhythm that is really important. And then the, there's notions of uh, of playing, not playing, playing fast, playing loud etc and so kids have to be really focused and either they play or you can ask one of the kids to be the the conductor they really enjoy doing that i suggest you you try that out like you you do it first yourself give the a few signs with your hand so like uh, you play you stop whatever you come up with the with your signs that you want with your hands that way you won't, you talk as less as possible. Once they've understood that, just ask who wants to do it. And, uh, and uh, there's always going to be someone who raises his hand and uh, want to try it. What else should, did I want to show you the cards I did it? Maybe... Um, yeah, maybe it's time for me to to show you maybe a quick demo of um, of Koala Koala app. Okay, I, I'm gonna plug it to Playtron and uh, and create some music with it. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna put the camera here so that you can see all the process of connecting. Boom, so. <coughs> okay, here is Playtron. I'm taking the cable out of my computer. Gonna need my uh, iPad adapter, which is right here. Boom. So this side comes in Playtron. Wait, on um, this way. And this side comes on the iPad. Okay. So here's Koala. Uh, as I said, Koala, you can uh, record sounds with it with your voice or you can load samples in there i'm going to showcase both options the first one is um, recording sounds so i'm not going to plug objects to it because we don't have that much time but the, i mean i'm going to do this and as you can see it triggers the sample that i have here or i could also record one Oh, now it's here. What's nice about Koala is that you can also put effects on the input. So let's put a reverb and go. Okay, now let's edit it. We want to the sound to start at the very beginning of the voice. So. And we want to reverse it. 
we want to put the pitch a bit higher or a bit lower that does a weird sound effect I like it what you can do also is duplicate it and let's say for example you change the pitch of this one okay and this one you can uh, mix it with this one so now you have both sounds on the same pad um, this is something I did earlier with voice so I duplicated my voice several times and I changed the pitch and then put them all together to make a chord and then I also recorded some beatbox um, and this part of Koala is so much fun with, uh, with kids when you're making your workshops because you, you don't have the computer uh, and so that's the first thing you don't need a mouse or a keyboard you just use your fingers that's also important and then the interface itself is way less complicated than Ableton like having them operate Ableton would take too much time to, to explain this one is pretty straightforward you press your key let's say this one no ha ha you record and that's it and the sample is here the editing also goes pretty fast because it's super visual and um, that's what we did this weekend I had a workshop in in Paris and we used Koala and the, the idea was uh, to ask kids to use um, um, uh, Play-Doh we used Play-Doh and we asked them, okay, show me how the future of uh, musical instruments will look like. Boom, they build their own uh, instruments, they give them names, they explain this one will be played like this, it's a mix of this and this, whatever. And then I ask, okay, well, how does it sound? And then they use, they use their own voice to record the, how they think it will sound. And since the voice, you cannot make everything, the the effect section and the editing section of Koala is really nice for that. Um, and so, yeah, we had a lot of fun that day. Uh, and then you have your bank sample. As you can see, you have 16 pads, just like the 16 inputs of Playtron. So 16 objects that you can connect. <coughs> Once you have that, you can create sequences. That's the other menu. You can play sequences that you that you record. Let's do a new one. So I put my tempo here. I have my metronome. It, it does have quantization. For you guys who don't know what quantization is, is that it takes the sound you just recorded and put them on a grid like a really um, a regular grid instead of having your your sounds floating a bit uh, between the beats you'll have them like boom 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 so that's why it changed a bit my rhythm that's my rhythm I have, I have other sequences here Let me record a chord. Okay. And the last step, so this also, uh, already with this you have creating sounds, talking about every single aspect of a sound, so attack, release, the volume, the panning, uh, if you have reverb, saturation, the pitch, if you want it up or down, etc. That's already a way of working on uh, sound design and the parameters, parameters of sound. 
uh, teaching them yeah, how sound works, because that's a fundamental aspect of music. Once you've done that, you go on the composition side, if I may say so. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's creating sequences, so the idea of rhythm, the idea of loop, the idea of ha having different sections, A, B, C, you know, going from one to another, so having maybe your verse and your chorus, talking about the tempo, you know, then you can record, but then you can also undo what you just did, how many bars you want them to last, etc. Like, that's a, just with that, you can go through so much, so much stuff, it, it's insane. And then you have the last section, which is called Perform, and has a bunch of effects that, can, that you can play live, and that will add um, life to your, to your performance. So, you play sequence, let's play just this one. have two two types of effects so if you don't know about koala uh, give it a try because I think it's like now that I've started using it I think I'm probably gonna use only this like not use Ableton <clears throat> I'll always have my computer but uh, like this is really the bomb so you don't necessarily need an iPad because it's on iPhone as well. If you have an iPhone, you can download it. It's just that the bigger screen is more convenient. And this is an iPad mini, but you can get it even bigger. Um, yeah, that's a really nice tool. Enough on that. Um, before we end this... Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's try, let's try it with Touch Me. Let's see. Um, I'm gonna plug in touch me so <clears throat> as I told you this workshop is more for Playtron but I'm, I'm gonna show you some stuff you can do with touch me but there, there will probably be a, a workshop just on touch me uh, to touch me right here touch me is uh, yeah it uses conductivity as well but you just have two inputs, it measures the, the touching surface of it, so brings the pitch higher or lower. Okay. Yeah, wait, okay. So as you can see, the, the lights, uh, the more I touch, or the less I touch, and the more they go up or down. So you can, you could, for instance, have um, many like notes or all, all over your samples. Do, 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 do. Have a, um, a scale, and play with color as well. Let me show you <coughs> um, another. Mm, yeah. Another, this is a sample pack, sorry, this is a sample pack uh, made by Nicola Chen. Nicola Chen is a musician who does sample packs for Playtronica, and good news, you're going to be able to download those. So he made these for uh, Koala, but you also can um, he also does uh, sample packs for for uh, ableton this is the kit so as you can see those are really well done processed sounds and um, they work as a song. The sequences that he already created. And voila. 
to go to perform. And you can play at the same time if you want. And uh, yeah, about Touch Me, you can all, all either play the samples or you, you can uh, use it as a as a keyboard. So you choose the sound you want to play. Let's play this one. And then. So yeah, call the app, guys. Uh, I think it's five ninety nine, four ninety nine, something like that, which is insanely cheap. <coughs> uh, cool. Uh, unless I have forgotten something, maybe I, uh, I'm gonna check if you guys have questions. Oh yeah, link for Nicola Chen. Um, link for uh, the sample packs i think uh, you're gonna have to send a message to Platronica and ask for it maybe uh, maybe sasha will answer you in the in the comments and tell you are there any okay any suggestion on cheap simple way to trigger midi lights i want to add visuals um unfortunately I don't have any any experience on that on triggering MIDI lights. I know you can do it. I know something someone from the team who does it. It's just about using um, using uh, MIDI to control your lights. I'm sure that's uh, ah with touch me. No wait, what? Suggestion cheap. Um, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I don't have uh, any tips on that. What's the special keyboard mode with Touch Me? So with Touch Me, you go into uh, sequence. So here you have the samples as is. But Touch Me, um, it's, it acts a bit like a keyboard. So you have to press this button here, keyboard. And you choose the sound that you want to play, okay? Let's choose, uh, yeah, let's choose this one. And then... Cool. Uh, while, while we're talking about Touch Me, let me just introduce... This is a bit of a premiere. Let me introduce um, an online app which is called Touch Me Experience. So yeah, of course I need to connect it. Touch Me Experience is made especially for Touch Me. And uh, it has a really awesome visual interface that can be changed while playing. Like if you hold a note, you can change the change the visuals it's really cool you can record I think uh, can you I don't I'm not sure it's uh, you see if I hold a note BAM how cool is that you can also change the um, change the the sound so here it's a square wave. Sawtooth. Etc. So go check it out. Touchme.chromatone.center. 
it's right here touch me experience okay guys i hope uh this has been useful so to sum things up uh, i just wanted to say that um for me working with this type of material is about changing your perception of music of making music at least and trying to be creative about it you know being um like thinking out of the box and going w why cannot an instrument be uh this shape or this color um, you know you can you can just use your imagination and and the tools that platonica do are really great for that um they help to bridge between different senses touch but also color with the uh, orbita and i yeah i really suggest that in your uh, work i don't know if all of you guys do education do workshops but if you do just keep in mind that the the bottom line of it is making music you know just keep that in mind and uh, i think i'm done here i'm gonna go check the questions again Uh, oh, there are many. So, touch me chromatone, the Apple Lightning adapter for cameras has used when you can charge. I use it. Yes, absolutely. Apple Lightning adapter. <coughs> Any other questions or should we end it here? You tell me. Maybe questions on what I explained. Is it, was everything clear? The example I gave you, or maybe you can, you guys can also put some suggestions uh, in the comments. Say, well, I use it like this, with this type of people. Uh, oh, yeah, Anna is asking how to connect it. I can show that real quick. It's true I didn't show the actual connection. So, it's not that complicated. You go, uh, you have to use your uh, crocodile clips, okay? Let's say, let's say that this is connected. Let's say that uh, Playtron here is connected to, to the USB. I'm going to do it. Wait a second. Voila. So, crocodile clips. Uh, let's say I want to connect. Uh, I have this type of, uh, of uh, tuner right here. It's metal, so it's, um, it's going to work. I take one side of the crocodile clip, put it on it. The other side, I put it on one of the inputs. So let's say B1. Those inputs can act either like uh, the keys of a keyboard. That's why they have the names D1, C1, D sharp, etc. They have the um, they can act as a keyboard, or they you can just um, map them in your software and say. I want B1 to trigger this sample or this loop or whatever. So you map it the way you want, but initially it can work as a keyboard. That's why it worked with the with dot piano, etc. So this is connected here, and then I need something for the ground. So let's say I don't know. Uh, let's say I have copper tape on my table ready to go. I take another cro crocodile clip, ground, and that's here. So now if I touch and the ground and the object if I don't touch the ground nothing. Okay? Yeah, that's the basic way. And you can connect 16 objects. Okay? I hope that's clear. That answers your question, Anna. Let's see if someone... Uh, 
Alex is asking if the video is going to be online for future reference. I think it will. We're uh, maybe going to edit it a bit, like take off the beginning, I don't know. But um, I'm sure it will be, yes, if you need to. And um, if you need, actually, to... Maybe if you want to talk about it and chat, because this was more like a demo, I, I went a bit fast on everything. But if you want to, to chat about this, uh, I can make myself available. So, yeah, do not hesitate. Lavoslava. Please, good idea. Yeah, okay. Okay, Anna, cool. Very useful. Cool. I'm glad you guys liked it. Um, let's wait a bit if we have more questions and then I think we can, uh, we can, uh, we can stop here. Yeah, I have another suggestion if you want. It's uh, uh, just a game that you could be playing. It, it works with adults, actually. You can uh, chop uh, a famous song or a song they like, chop it, so have different pieces of, let's say, the chorus, for example. Um, connect the objects and put the, the chops on every object, and then they have to put it back in the order, like play it back in the order. I'm sure you, you've seen videos of, uh, of playing playing with Playtron and playing like uh, Ghostbusters and they go and so you can do that with songs or either you choose the songs or you tell them to do it. What song do you want? And then you record the chops and then some other kids or themselves they have to play it in the right order. That's a nice game you can do. Just, yeah, just a, a quick idea like this. Let's see the comments. Okay, well, thank you for your feedback, guys. Uh, thanks for taking part. Keep in touch for the, the next, tut uh, not tutorial, sorry, uh, workshop that will uh, be on touch me i think we we can we are going to schedule that soon and uh, i hope this was useful i had fun doing it of course and yeah keep keep being creative uh if you have any questions ask Polytronica. we did a bunch of um yeah tutorials you have the videos you have the written tutorials i did one that's on uh, ableton if you're looking for using Ableton with, uh, with Playtron, there's a tutorial on that. So just go to the, to the website and uh, yeah, get your, get your material, get your copper tape, get your aluminium, your uh, conductive ink, and let's go, be creative. All right, thanks everyone. Uh, see you next and uh, take care. Bye-bye.